Hey everyone, welcome to my joint review of both Sonic Superstars and Super Mario Wonder. It's incredible that both of these games have been released around the same time. My childhood mind would be absolutely blown to know that 30 years later we are still getting sequels to two of my favourite games of all time. So, how do they hold up to the classics and are they worth playing? Let's find out. So the last time that this happened where both Sonic and Mario had brand new 2D platformers in the same year was all the way back in 2012. And I played and enjoyed both the games with New Super Mario Bros. U and Sonic 4 Episode 2 which is a lot better than people give it credit for. But in the decade plus since, have the developers taken the criticisms on board and improved both of these franchises? In some ways yes and also in some ways no. It's clear that Nintendo hasn't spent their time just sitting around and enjoying the money printing machine that is New Super Mario Bros. U. Well, maybe they have a bit, but it seems like they channeled that budget into setting up a team that could spend as long as they want, coming up with new and fresh ideas. Whereas Sega, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have had the same luxury. They clearly don't have unlimited time or budget, and they also don't have the same level of experience in the development teams. So maybe it is an unfair comparison to pit these two games against each other, but I'm going to do that anyway. And honestly, I do have some positives and negatives to share about both games. So let's begin with what both of these games have in common. The first thing they both share is that they both feel absolutely fantastic to play. Both games have honestly nailed the 2D physics, which is something that earlier entries in both series I think really struggled with, from the move from pixel art 2D to 2.5D with 3D rendered graphics. There was always something a little bit off about the physics, but both Nintendo and Sega have absolutely nailed the formula with these two games. Sonic Superstars apparently took some of the code from Sonic Mania, so that's that's why it feels so familiar and I'm really glad they included things like the drop dash as well that really adds a lot to the Sonic gameplay and it makes it kind of difficult to go back and play the classics honestly. Mario on the other hand has subtly tweaked physics from the new Super Mario Bros games but it makes it a lot more enjoyable to play overall. And then both of the games as well also have a wealth of brand new movement options that get placed on top of those base physics. In Sonic's case every time you collect a Chaos Emerald you get granted a new power up which you can choose by moving the C-Stick around and then you can press the square button to be able to use these different powers and they're all really interesting and at first I was kind of worried that I would forget to use these but actually when you get to a specific part in one of the levels a little icon shows up in the corner and all you need to do is press the square button to be able to use that power. And there's some really innovative things here as well. There's like a fireball that allows you to shoot around in the sky. There's something that reveals hidden platforms. There's one that allows you to climb up waterfalls. Mario Wonder actually has a very similar system by introducing loads of new mechanics, but in this case you're only allowed to pick one and that is in the form of the badge system. In this case the badges are given to you by solving different challenges around the world map and you get to pick one at the start of each level. Some of them are kind of spins on classic Mario moves like holding down to be able to build up a super jump or Luigi's kind of flutter kick in the air. So it's really cool that they allowed you to use all these things, but you do need to experiment with which ones you actually enjoy using within the levels themselves. And then of course there's all brand new ones as well, like using Mario's hat to float around the stage. It's so cool and it is a really great addition to the Mario series. Although I would like it if there was some more actual abilities that are linked to Mario in general. So you wouldn't have to keep swapping them in and out. Maybe that's something that they'll experiment with in the sequel. And in terms of interesting mechanics, both games actually have a lot of interesting gimmicks in the levels themselves. Of course, Super Mario Wonder is based entirely around this premise, and basically every single level is something completely new, completely unique, and completely unexpected. Which, on the whole, is fantastic and it really shows a lot of creativity on Nintendo's part. But at times it can feel a little bit overbearing as well and I do kind of miss the traditional just run from left and right and finish the stage in the Mario games. But I'll get back to my feelings on the level designs a bit later on. In Sonic's case it's a little more subtle but a lot of the levels do have their own quirks. So for example I really like the level Press Factory which has sort of a hydraulic system and you can see in the background it counts down and then after I don't know five or six seconds the floor actually shunts upwards and you get jumped up to the level above so it makes for some really interesting challenging level designs. Both games are full of really unique and original mechanics and I love both of the game designs overall. 
So in terms of the level designs themselves, there's actually a stark contrast between both the games. In Sonic stages, they're actually incredibly long, with some of them reaching like 7 or 8 minutes, which is great if you really want to get into the flow and explore the levels. Whereas Mario, on the other hand, most of the stages only last 1 or 2 minutes, and they're filled with exciting things to do all the way through, whereas some of Sonic's stages do feel a little bit empty and a little bit stretched out at points. There isn't really anything wrong with either approach, and honestly, I would actually like the Sonic levels to be a bit shorter, and I would like the Mario levels to be a bit longer, so I would honestly love to see a game that is sort of halfway in between the two of them. And strangely, and this is kind of a downer to end this section on, but both games, I feel, have very forgettable soundtracks. In Mario's case, it doesn't really seem to have the same sort of melodic tunes as any of the other Mario games. All the songs that I've heard so far just seem to kind of fade into the background, which isn't necessarily bad, and they all fit the levels really well, but none of them have been memorable. Like, even if you go back and play some of the new Super Mario Bros. games, I can just hum along with the songs on, this, on that one, but in this game, I honestly feel like it's more just like drum loops and occasional bits of melody that never really form into anything solid, so... I'm not really sure whether I just need to listen to the soundtrack more and then maybe I'll get more used to it, or if it is kind of a different take on the Mario soundtrack in general. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the Mario Wonder soundtrack. And the Sonic soundtrack, on the other hand, some of the level themes are good, but it is really strange that they chose two different composers, and it is very jarring going from one style to the other. So, one of the composers is T. Lopez, who obviously composed the amazing soundtrack for Sonic Mania, and his tracks in this game still feel a little bit subdued compared to Sonic Mania, and they're not as instantly memorable or recognisable, but again, Maybe that's just because I haven't played the game over and over enough in order to actually enjoy these compositions. And then the other half of the levels and the boss fights are actually composed by John Snow, who famously is the composer for Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2, and you can tell that he used the same instruments in this game as he did in those ones. But even then, going back to listen to Sonic 4 Episodes 1 and 2, while the sound quality may not be great, the actual compositions and the melodies are very memorable, especially in Episode 2. I actually really enjoy that soundtrack, but in this game, I couldn't recall any of the songs after I completed the game, and even people in the chat on my Twitch stream were saying how the boss music just doesn't really feel exciting. Another thing that stands in contrast between the two games is the way that bosses are dealt with in the game. So. I actually prefer how it's done in Sonic in this case, so the bosses in Sonic are all very original designs, and they all have quite long boss fights where you have to sort of pick out their patterns and attack when you've got the opportunity. They can, just like the levels themselves, get drawn out a little bit because you do have to wait a long time between the time that you're actually allowed to attack the boss, but the fights themselves are very enjoyable and they're all very unique. I really enjoyed encountering each boss for the first time and I was very excited to see what they did with them. Whereas Mario, on the other hand, has the typical boring Bowser Jr. boss fights at the end of each world, which is really kind of a shame and I wish they were more original and exciting like the rest of the levels were. So in conclusion, obviously Mario is the better game. It's way more polished, it's way more enjoyable just to play and experience the levels, and it's a lot more fun in multiplayer as well. And I'm just so jealous of kids who are going to grow up playing Super Mario Wonder. Just imagine all of the memories that they're going to make with this game and all of the nostalgic feelings that they're going to have in like 10 or 20 years time looking back on this masterpiece. But honestly, I really enjoyed both the games and I'm just so happy that developers feel like they can create brand new 2D platformers in this day and age where everyone wants the biggest and best 3D experiences possible. To be able to say that I bought a brand new 2D Mario and Sonic game in the same month in 2023 just fills me with so much joy and I'm so glad that both these games exist. 
Both of them, I feel, have a long way to go to make them the ultimate experience in either of their respective franchises, but I honestly believe that if the developers put their minds and their money and their attention to it, they can honestly make two of the best games of all time if they just keep going on this path. It really is a very exciting time in gaming, so let me know down below what you thought of these two games. Did you pick any of them up? Are you planning to? Do you prefer one a lot more over the other? Let me know down below what your thoughts are on both of these games. And if you want to see another video of games that I've been playing recently, click up here and watch that one next. Goodbye.